Hi everyone, Peter Giannatos here uh, after round five of the Norm Invitational with uh, Benjamin Moon, who just scored a big victory over his opponent. And uh, so Benjamin, congratulations. And uh, just tell everyone about your game and uh, what you think some of the critical moments are. So, uh, sure. yeah. Yeah. So here we had a, a Kings Indian game. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to talk too much about the opening. Sure. So yeah. uh, we'll just skip that. And uh, there was actually a pretty juicy middle game, let's call it. So a lot of things going on. Yeah. Uh, I'll just skip this whole opening stage. Uh, Do you, is this theoretical here? Um, yeah, I, I okay. did know some things here, but okay. um, I wasn't expecting this. It was kind of just trying to recall from a long time ago. Oh, okay. um, so around here is where it gets interesting. Mm -hmm. So here, basically, I think the, my big problem is my knight on e8. Um, I mean, he's he's a long way from doing anything. And when he's locked in, the rook on f8 is also locked in. So that's my big problem. Um, so that's what I need to solve. But I was thinking if I manage to do that, then I think my position is okay mm -hmm. because um, he's super, oh, he's overextended on the king side. Um, so maybe like finding safety for his king is hard. And also maybe in some positions, these pawns could actually become weak. Um, so here I played bishop b5. Uh, not too much to say. So this doesn't sack a pawn because f3 is hanging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. f3. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so he played bishop e2, which I think is the best move. Um, something like uh, capturing, I guess the problem is then the c4 square is uh, I'm kind of invading, and also the open a file, so he doesn't want to capture. So he plays bishop e2, kind of keeping the tension. Yeah. And now, now that he's covering f3 with his bishop, he might be threatening to take my bishop with the knight. Yeah, take my bishop with the knight. Yeah. Uh, so I traded those guys, and here I got really confused, uh, very, very confused here. Because again, it's the same problem with my knight, and I didn't manage to take advantage of any like tactical possibilities with the f3 pawn. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just left with this knight. So I, I, I burnt a lot of time here, mm -hmm. um, and then I decided it was best to go for this position. Okay. Um, so here is the, the same story. So now all the tactical possibilities are gone, uh, and it's just a question of trying to get my knight out, right? And yeah. then again, if I, I think if I can get him out, then, then I'm doing okay. What's your assessment of this position? Like, do you feel, did you feel slightly worse here because of your knight? Um, I don't know how, like the objective evaluation, mm -hmm. but uh, I was feeling confident. Um, oh, okay. Just in general, this tournament, I've been trying to stay really confident mm -hmm. and believe in my position. Yeah. So, um, I, I mean, I was thinking I can get out of this. Um, so he castles queen e6. Uh, so the plan is c6, knight c7, you know, getting that knight out. He doesn't really have any other ways to get out. Um, knight d3, hitting my pawn, a5, knight f4. So it looks like my queen is running out of squares, but I can kind of go back and forth between e5 and e6, and it's kind of very hard for him to, to find a, the right way to kick me out. Uh, so queen e5, he defends the b2 pawn. Here I'm thinking if he plays knight d3, I mean, he can force a repetition if he wants, because queen g3, um, he just blocks the check, and I'm not actually winning this pawn because of the my queen gets trapped. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I, I, w I wouldn't want to go into this endgame when my knight is not out yet. Yeah. Um, so I would probably have to go back to e6. So here he can repeat if he wants. Um, but he was going for the win with rook ab1. Um, so c6, same plan, getting my knight out. Um, queen c4. So here he's kind of threatening knight g6, but it's not really a threat yet because queen g3, and I would have perpetual. Yeah. Um, so I took my the time to get my knight out. Uh, king g2. So now knight takes g6 is actually a threat because there's no perpetual. Uh, here I played king h7 mm -hmm. to get rid of his knight takes g6 threat. But here I was actually feeling like I'm I'm much worse. Um, I, I mean, my knight isn't really going anywhere. Um, to e6, you can he'll always just take it. And knight d3 is a threat in some positions to force like an endgame. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. Um, rook fd1 is a nice move. So that was kind of the downfall of king h7. I spent a lot of time thinking about it because if I play rook ad8 here, uh, I can't because he, he has queen takes f7. Yeah. So it kind of looks like he's invading here. Yeah. Um, and then here I kind of went for this desperado plan that I, I came up with, with after king h7 is f5. Okay. Okay. Um, so just I kind of felt like I was slowly, you know, going to die. So I just thought I'd blow things up. Yeah. My original plan was actually f6, but I think there's this funny idea with knight takes g6. Oh, wow. 
uh, king takes g6, and then my queen is lost, actually, because queen e6, uh, f5, right? Yeah. So uh, That's great. at the last second, I saw that, so I went for f5 instead. Um, but here, I think I'm also worse, or maybe even losing, because I think rook d7 is the best move, um, where I'm actually not threatening to take this pawn, which I think is the important thing to realize, because then he just takes back with the queen, and... Yeah, the rook on the seventh. Yeah, the rook on the I'm just gonna lose. Yeah. Um, and rook a d8, which was my original plan, uh, he can actually just take and invade on f7. On oh, d6. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here again, I think I'm just busted. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm thinking rook d7, and I'm in a lot of trouble. I didn't actually figure out what I was gonna do. Um. But yeah, here he made a big mistake, and I might be win winning after this move. Um, because he actually, we talked after the game, mm -hmm. he said, uh, well, there's four recaptures here, and he said he pretty much considered all of them seriously, except the one I did, mm -hmm. which is by far the best. Um, so queen takes f6, and that puts my queen right on this battery, which is very natural. Um, um, and, okay, so I'm threatening to take on h4, and if this were my position, I'm threatening e5, mm -hmm. uh, just kicking the knight out with f3 threats. Mm -hmm. So the big move here to consider is, of course, rook d7. Um, anything else where he tries to kind of keep it over here together, like rook f1, right. um, then I have bishop h6 here, for example, taking advantage of this. Um, and something like queen e2, once he like concedes something like that, I don't think I can be worse. I don't know, queen takes h4 or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, rook d7 is the big move. Uh, but then here, I think the very strong move is g5. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I'm winning here. Right. He can't ignore you. Yeah. Right, because yeah. f3, so he's got to yeah. take it. Right. Um, yeah, so he can either try to take you on g5 yeah. or c7. Okay. Uh, so if okay. he takes on c7, I think I have zero problems here. Uh, bishop f2, and I, like, I'm like i super protected over here, and actually I think it's him, him in danger, so maybe yeah. just simply rook a d8. Um, yeah, and you've got in your knight, like the problem piece is like not yeah, a problem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So now we're back to where, where I'm just better structurally, right? Yeah. And then, I don't know, maybe a plan like rook g8, bishop f8, queen g6, I, I don't know. Um, but here, I don't think I can be worse. Um, yeah, so he went for h takes g5, probably the, the only other move. Uh, h takes g5, queen takes. Um, and here, I, I'm winning. Uh, king f2, queen h4 check. Uh, I saw a funny variation over here. It's probably never going to happen. But if he tries to run that way, queen h2, obviously he can't go back. And if right. he comes here, I don't do anything with taking this knight. Like, rook a d8 is actually just... I, I thought it would be nice. There's no way out. Yeah. I thought it would be nice to win like that, but um, he goes back. Yeah. And rook takes f4, which seems like the big idea here. Right. Probably, f well, he said he was going to play rook h1, which uh -huh. makes a lot of sense. And queen g5, king f2. Okay. Where, like, there's yeah. a lot, there's pins here. There's this rook on my king. This rook is still on the seventh. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of ugly. Yeah. Um, but here, I think I found a really, really nice move, bishop e5, where I think the game is just empty. Yeah, now you have rook yeah. g, you introduce rook d8 with check. Yeah. Yeah. I'm threatening to, well, I'm threatening to win just the knight for three. Piece. My yeah. bishop comes here to defend the knight. Uh, right, rook g8, my queen is protecting the pawn. So everything is under control, and I just introduced a whole, a whole bunch of threats. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought the best try was maybe rook takes c7, mm -hmm. but... Like, like he has nothing here. Yeah, right. uh, there's right. just there's just nothing. Um, yeah. I just won the exchange and I'm still playing the knight and the yeah. G file. Um, but he found a, I guess the maybe a decent or best try rook G1. Uh, so bishop takes f4, takes takes. Uh, so I just won the piece. My my knight is on pre, but there's no way he can take it with like rook G8 coming. Um, so he played rook H1. Mm -hmm. The point is if rook G8. Um, then queen takes g8, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Takes, and then he takes my queen, and then my knight is hanging at the end, yes. probably losing there. Yeah, the rook and um, would be good for me. So queen g5 instead, uh, with the check, and my queen is covering everything. And then here, I uh, I mean, everything is probably winning, but rook takes f3 is nice. Oh, nice. Uh, so for example, if he takes it, yeah. rook f8, king e2 only move, queen g2. Yeah. If he goes back anywhere, I'll take the rook with check. Yeah. And if he comes up, my rook comes down, and then this is game over. Ouch. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't take my rook, and then I just slid my other rook over, because again, he has no threats here with any of my pawns. Yeah. Um, and here he tried taking my knight. Uh, anything is winning here, but I thought this was simple. Yeah, check. 
And then here he resigned. Um, if, if he ever runs, runs anywhere here, that's coming on the line of my queen, so it takes. And if he runs here, queen g2 is ending. There's no way out. Yeah, so he resigned. Yeah. Well, good, well, I mean, it was a complicated game, and that's what you're, I guess, you're looking for in these tournaments where you need a big, you need a big score, you know, yeah. like plus four. So it may have not have been like the most perfect game, you know, but it was uh, once the complications start, it seemed like you got the, you got the better of the position prior to that. Yeah. I'm not sure what was yeah. happening there, but um, yeah, after F5, um, I think, I think you're right. Like what you were suggesting with Rook to D7 yeah, would have been a better chance for him. And then, um, yeah, you seem to get in the position after F5. So I think like, for the viewers at home, I think something that they could learn is like instead of shriveling up in a ball and just dying the slow death, you felt the need yeah, to have to yeah. do something. Yeah, exactly. And uh, sometimes that can be a good thing, and sometimes that can be a bad thing. But in that case, you yeah. needed to do yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. Complicated. Yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations. That puts you at uh, is that four out of five? Yeah, four out of five. Yeah. So four out of five. So um, you know, good standing in the tournament, and um, yeah. So uh, we won't talk too much about specific results yeah, needed yeah, and so yeah. forth. But yeah. So. Uh, just, I guess, keep doing what you're doing. If you can score 80, you know, keep it 80% the whole time. Then yeah, you're, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so anyway, congratulations and uh, good luck in the rest of the tournament. Yeah.